Color grading C log footage is actually much easier than you think. And with a tiny bit of knowledge, you'll be able to go from this to this in about one minute. Today, I'll show you how to do it without any special plugins or LUTs. I'm Raphael, and welcome to the channel. Conversion LUTs are great when they work, but what do you do when they fail? And they will fail. This technique I'm using in this video will work in any editor that has color correction tools. I did the exact same walkthrough in Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere. You can find those links in the description below. In this video, we'll talk about how to set the exposure and contrast properly in log footage, how to easily white balance with and without a color chart using the waveform, how to correct skin tone issues using the vector scope, how to check to make sure that the skin tone is set between 40 and 70 IRE and exposed properly, how to set the presets to use on all your footage, and how you'll never have to ask for help again once you've practiced these steps. Full disclosure, I am not a colorist, but for most of my client work, I will gladly hire pros to be as precise as possible to grade the footage. However, for smaller projects and my own personal work, I've learned these steps required to quickly get from log footage to the base grade without using LUTs or expensive plugins. So this isn't the be all and end all for color correcting C log footage or any log footage for that matter. There are many ways to do the same thing, but it's a method I found that works really well to rough in a base grade and add some personality to it after. So let me ask this question. Why do we shoot log in the first place? It's to ensure that the camera captures the most amount of detail in any scene, the darkest dark and the brightest bright. Rec 709 is designed to output between seven and nine stops of dynamic range, and it's mostly a display standard. Log helps expand that distance to 12 to 16 stops depending on the camera. Rec 709 color space looks pleasant. Log footage does not. So then we have to bring back the information to a pleasant look. But now we can choose if we want the brighter end, the darker end, or a nice mix of both. As I go through this method, I will try to cut it down to only the essential things you'll need to know to correct and then grade your footage. All these steps assume that your footage is exposed mostly correctly and is within the right white balance. Check out this video where I talk about correctly exposing your EOS R for C log footage. And since you're here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if this video helps you out. Quick terminology recap we'll be talking about in this video, color correction and color grading. Color correction is when you fix color issues, color space, color temperature, the white balance, or skin tones in the video. Color grading is adding color for creative purposes to convey meaning, mood, location, time of day, themes, character associations. It's really powerful stuff psychologically. If you have a color chart, this will help setting up your own LUTs or correcting for any location. But don't worry, I'll show you how to correct even without a color chart. All a LUT does is tonally remap colors from one place to another. This value should be this, and that value should be that. And it's all based on the log footage you start with. That is why different LUTs don't work with different log footage. And it's why creative LUTs never work without normalizing your footage first. They all assume the footage is starting from a certain color space, like Rec. 709, which is the most common. But we won't be talking about the creative grading much in this video. This video is how to get your log footage to a starting point by normalizing it. The creative decisions you make on how you want your footage to look after that, that is up to you. That's where you get to play and have fun. If you like it and you think it looks good, go for it. There really are no rules. To be clear, there isn't one one button button to rule them all. Unless your footage is perfectly exposed with 100% perfect white balance, expect to do a bit of tweaking either the color tint or the luma. Though there are some simple truths that do work as a starting point. And today we'll cover that workflow. Once you're in DaVinci, make sure you go over the color tab, select the image you want to work with. And if you have a color chart up, I know what you're thinking, but Raphael, I don't have a color chart. So this is going to work for me. And you would be wrong, random citizen. I am going to show you how to do it without color charts and even without any skin tone in the shot. So just give me a second. We're going to start with the color chart first, because this is the best way to get precise colors. Open up the waveform monitor. Let's make it a little bit bigger. This represents the luminance values across the image from left to right. The bottom is black and top is full white. So from left to right, you can actually see where all the hot spots are, where all the brightness happens. Here are all the colors on the color chart, the white, gray, and black right here. So what we want to do with these three stripes right here, we want to bring the white as close to the top as we can. We want to bring the middle gray right into the middle and we want to bring the black as close as we can to the bottom without touching it. I like bringing the black to about 
five or 10% and the white to about 90, 95% and then adjust from there. So once you have your image open and waveform is up, so your image is selected, then we take the lift and we start to drag it to the left to bring down the blacks right here. Now we wanna to go to gain, which is the whites and the highlights and crank that up until we get to about there. You can already see that the image is starting to look a lot better. So beyond that, you wanna add some contrast because log footage is lacking contrast. Crank that up. And then you wanna add some saturation because log footage is desaturated. So not too much, just find a nice balance. One of the things that you definitely wanna check for is the highlights are in a good place, middle gray is in a good place, and then the blacks can go down, but I'm already starting to see that this image is kind of pushed quite dark. After that is done, we've added the contrast, we have the saturation, and now we can go in and start adjusting the image to what feels good. So the last step that I would do, so right now I'm gonna add another node in DaVinci by pushing Alt S, which just gives us another layer essentially, think Photoshop. And I'm going to add a mask. I'm gonna add a mask around the white, gray, and black. I'm gonna push Shift H to isolate it. And I wanna, this is where I wanna make sure that the whites are white. So these should all line up. So this image has a little bit of red in it. So I would actually pull away from the red to add some more blue and green, just so they're balanced a little bit better. The grays seem pretty good. Could add a little bit of green. And the blacks look pretty good. I do feel a tint of red. So now I know that this is near white, this is gray, and this is black. So I'm gonna turn off the mask. And then one last thing that I like to do is to make sure that the skin tones are exactly where I need them to be. So I'll select any skin tone that is in the shot. I'll go into my vector scope, push shift H to isolate just the skin. And you can see that it's off. This is the skin line. And if you don't see this indicator, just make sure you go to skin tone indicator, make sure it's selected on. We wanna push this over to the line and a little bit to the right of it. So it's, it's leaning towards yellow. We wanna make sure that we can add some red and magenta to it to bring it that way. You can use offset or highlight. We wanna add some red and magenta. So we're gonna click the offset and just slightly push it in that direction and then we look at the image and that looks pretty good so this is the before log and this is graded to rec 709 once you've done this with the help of the color chart if you're working in DaVinci you can just copy and paste it to all your clips that were shot in this environment and you know it's going to match up and look good and all you have to do is adjust for any lighting changes that happen throughout the scene or you can do what I do and bring in your reference frame into DaVinci, do all your grading, and then generate a 3D LUT that you can use in either Premiere or Final Cut. So this is a way to create your own base LUT that you know always works and you have full control to go back and adjust it later. So an easy way to apply the grade in DaVinci is just grab a still of it. It'll get put into your media gallery. And this shot here was also filmed on the USR in Log. And I can just take it and then apply the grade to that one shot. So again, anything that was filmed in one location, you can just apply the grade very, very simply. And it does all, all this without being too complicated. Once I'm comfortable with the edits, this is where I would add some sharpening just to bring back some of that detail. So let's do another shot to see how quickly we can color correct this log footage. So starting again, I'm gonna bring up my waveform monitor, drop down the blacks because I know that this should be black. These white should be white. I want to bring the overall image up, add some contrast, add some saturation, add an extra node. Gonna select the skin and you always want to avoid the lips 
the eyes and the nostrils to make sure that you're getting an accurate skin tone. Hit Shift H. So it's definitely too bright. So I want to bring that down. I want to keep the skin tone between 40 and 70%. IRE. Go to the vector scope and adjust to make sure that the skin is on the skin tone indicator. Deselect and we're essentially done. So this is where you can now go after and add your orange and teal. Add orange to the highlights. And just drop, add teal to add teal to the shadows. So that's base correction and that's orange and teal-ish. And you can always check to make sure that your skin tones are always on point after the fact, if you're worried about it. I trust the scopes so much when I do work. It's still on point, looks good to me, and we're done. And now you can just export this and you can just save your own LUT to use in any other application. This was shot on the C200 and I'm gonna show you how to do it without any color charts and use the skin tone as your exposure settings and as your color correction. So we're gonna do the exact same thing and see how fast we can get through it, all right? So go to waveform, drop the darks, drop the shadows down, but I know that there shouldn't be anything that's too dark in it, so I don't want it to go too low, um, but definitely we can boost the gain. And this I know is the highlights on the bottle. This is the skin face exposure. So you wanna add some contrast, add some saturation back into the desaturated log footage, add an, a new node, grab the skin tone, select it by hitting Shift H, the exposure seems good between between 40 and 70. Go to your vector scope. You can see that it's a little bit red in magenta, so we can just drop that back down. Open it back up. And you can add in a little bit of tweaks. Add some extra punch in, in the contrast. But overall, there's your base image and then you can color correct to what you feel works for you. So what if you have a shot that has no skin tone, that has no color chart, and you're starting from there? So let's do a shot like that. Again, we're gonna bring up the waveform monitor. We're gonna to go to lift. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna drop it down. We're gonna bring up the highlights. And I know that these highlights should be close to clipping. I don't wanna to go too much. I want to keep it going down. I know that these are black boots, so that definitely helps. So we're going to add some contrast back in. Definitely some saturation. And because I know that these are supposed to be black boots, I'm going to add an extra node. I will then select it, hit Shift H to isolate it. So I want to bring these three in line as close as I can. So there's a lot of red and not enough blue. So we can add some blue and add some green and just try to find where that balance is. Because it's a sunset shot, I know that it shouldn't be too perfect, but let's see what that looks like. And I'm going to deselect the mask. So this is just the luminance values corrected and then added a little bit of blue back into the scene where starts to feel a little bit natural and balanced and this is where you can start playing with it and uh, adjust a little bit more because this is this was a sunset shot so it should definitely feel a little bit warmer so you can add some of that red back in to what feels good but after this fact you can go in and start adjusting it even more and it really comes down to what you want to do there are literally no rules that is where I would leave it in DaVinci. There are many other things you can do, but I just wanted to show how to color correct for C-Log footage from the Canon EOS R and C-Log 3 footage from the C200. So let's recap. Use the waveform monitor, drop the shadows to about 5%, bring the highlights to about 95%, add a little contrast, boost the saturation using the vector scope, 
Check to make sure your skin tones are on the skin tone indicator. Use the Luma value between 40 to 70 for skin. Add your creative grade that fits your story and mood. Sharpen the image to what feels right for you. Add a vignette to help focus on the important thing in the scene. Save your preset or LUT. Apply the grade to the rest of your footage and you are done. If you do find a LUT that works for you and it converts and corrects your log footage correctly, use it. It'll save you a lot of time. I made this video as a guide for when your LUTs don't work or you get tired of a particular look and you want to create your own and for you to be able to color correct your C-Log footage in any scenario. Let me know if you guys have any tips or tricks to color grade your C-Log footage. Also, I would love to see how you guys use these techniques to color grade your own C-Log footage. As always, thanks for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if it helped you out. I'm Rafael. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.